What's going on, everybody? And thanks for tuning back in to another episode of Florida Prison Talk. Just like I promised, we got the Latin King here who was locked up in the Florida Department of Corrections for a total of 10 years. He's in the Zoom box today, going to tell us about his story in the Florida Department of Corrections. Introduce yourself real quick, bro. Yeah, what's going on, man? They call me Chico Black, man. You feel me? I'm straight out of Miami. You feel me? Born and raised. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Um, right. Shit. 13 years in prison, man. You know? Um, shit. Made it out the jungle, bro. That's all I can say. How long you been home now? Um, I got home October 26th of last year. That was my last bit. I just did three. You feel me? And you on papers? Yeah, I'm on shit. No, I got, <laughs> I'm on hospital res, bro. Oh, okay. So I'm on, I'm on hospital because they just tried to give me 15 more and shit. So I just went ahead and took the little hospital shit so I could get up out of there. Okay. All right, man. Without no further ado, man, we're going to get right into this, man. Um, Briefly, on this channel, I like to focus on the Department of Corrections. But briefly speak about what crime did you commit to get to the Department of Corrections? Um, it was an attempt of murder and a home invasion robbery. Um, I was 17 at the time. You feel me? We were down south in um, the Cutler Ridge area. Okay. And, uh, and, um, and shit, we were hitting traps, man. But, you know, the police, you know, when you when you go to rob somebody, they don't really care about they selling drugs or, or no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? They only care about the crime. So... They knew they were setting dope about the trap, but they couldn't do nothing because we got caught up for robbing them. So I went to prison. I caught 10 years for that. Dang. At 17? At 17, bro. I went in, I went in three weeks for my 18th birthday, and I got out when I was 28, bro. Wow. I did two years, 10 months. Dang, that's crazy. So, okay, so you, you you get convicted. You go to the Florida Department of Corrections. What's your first facility you hit? Um, other words in South Florida. Uh, they sent me to Bavard, you feel me? I was at the Gladiator camp. I was at JIT camp for a little while, you know what I'm saying? That's in, in the, the, I've done a lot of JIT camp interviews on this page, so the subscribers I've had, that, they love that kind of stuff, man. So let's speak about the JIT camp, man. How long, when you got to Bavard, how long did it take for trouble to find you? Uh, immediately. As soon as you get off the bus, bro, you feel me? It's a... Um, it's something that they do called a TOH, it's like a little test of heart, you feel me? And okay. everybody got to go through it. So you go into the orientation dorm and um and, and they TOH you right then and there to see what type of, you know what I'm saying? See, see where your heart at, you feel me? And since since I was a king on the street, I came in there already with a, with a name. Like people already knew me. I had dogs. I was already there, you feel me? So my transition was a little bit smoother, but, you know, I still had to I still had to get in the grid and still, you know, do what I had to do at the time, you feel me? Because everybody didn't know me. Before you came to prison. Excuse me. You was Latin King before you went to prison? Yeah, 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 yeah. I call I've been a king since I was I was born a king, bro, but I'm an active, I'm an active king, bro, since like 2001. You wow. feel me? My old boy, because my old boy's a king, you know what I'm saying? So oh. so okay. uh yeah, I've been active since like 01, though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't go to prison since 2008. So I was running the streets for a while, bro. Okay. You know, my brother and shit. I actually caught a Rico back in 2006 in Tampa. It was mm. real big, man. Uh uh, 39 Latin Kings arrested in the state of Florida and shit like that. I got caught up in a big raid. People could look that shit up as a temple. Oh, put that in the, the link in the comments for that. So you yeah. when, when, when Bavard, is there Latin, a lot of Latin Kings already there? Who has the numbers at Bavard when you there? Man, it was the Kings and the Zoes, man, ZMF. So it wasn't no bloods at that time really like that? I, yeah, I mean, you had some bloods, but they weren't really around like that. You know, bloods ain't really start popping off on the street down here to like 2005, 2006. And then in the chain gang, they ain't really become a a, a, a factor to like 2000 and I want to say like 2000 and, and, and like 12, 13, some shit like that. You know what okay. I'm saying? They weren't really big down here. Even to this day, all the bloods, they look, they young, but they ain't got no old like, you know, this is it's, it's not real common that you'll see an old head like 40, 50 years old like you were with us. So we've okay. been down here so long. So like 1984, we've been down here. It's a lot of old heads down here. You know, this is like 50, 60 years old. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. What's going on in Bavard, man? Is the drugs there? What are the Latin Kings doing? Y'all extorting people? What's going on at Bavard when you was there as a Latin King? I mean, I mean, it really, I mean, it really wasn't extortion because you know it was a jit camp, so everything was like working off of like jizzles, like um niggas who don't stand up for themselves and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like right. everybody had them. It really wasn't like no um like 
like no setup or no shit like that. It was just, you know, they come off the bus. If they they ain't they 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 ain't trying to check in or they they trying to stay on the pond and they ain't repping nothing, then they're gonna be up under somebody, you feel me? And then more than likely they're gonna be paying everything and all that other shit, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, bro. Between us and the Zoes, bro, they probably had the numbers, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because they were bringing in anybody. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you was white, if you was whatever, if you if, if you want to be a Z, you, was, you could you could rock with them. You know what I'm saying? Because they were about numbers. They really were worrying about structure. You know what I'm saying? Having the structure and shit like those, like us, like us were more we're more structural. You know what I'm saying? Everybody plays a position, and we understand that. Okay. And as far as Bravara goes at the JIT camp, what are the white inmates going through? Do they do they do they, do they have it much harder than everybody else? I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It probably ain't. I, I really don't even remember five white boys that was on the pile. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't living them, bro. Yeah. They yeah. not living. So, when you left Bavar, how long you was at Bavar for? I was at Bavar for like nine months, and then we got into a riot with the Zoes. We got into a big ass riot in Let's 2000. Speak to you. Over nothing today. Let's. How did that day start off? The day of the riot. Walk the viewers through that day. Um, what led up to it? Well, we well, it was already it was already um it was already a, a set day that we were gonna go ahead and pop out because you know things things weren't running right. You know what I'm saying? They were doing whatever they wanted, breaking into people's lockers and shit like that. So um, when we woke up that morning, it was just a meeting. It was just to meet. You know what I'm saying? To make sure everybody was on the same page and knew what we, what we were gonna do that day. You know what I'm saying? And um. It just so happened, man. You know, when you be trying to plan something out, shit don't never go as planned. I swear, right. you feel me? So, <laughs> so right. we had we had it all set up to where after dinner we was all gonna link up and make that. That shit ain't nothing like that turn out. That shit ended up happening at lunchtime in the middle of the uh, cafeteria. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, like a motherfucker, dog. Right. Yeah, shit. So what's but, going um, on? The hands and the weapons involved. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you ain't really have, I mean, the bar at this time, bro, they ain't even have doors on the rooms, bro, because it was so much violence, you feel me? And they took all the doors off the cells, bro, so nobody could lock nobody in there, no shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, weapons, you ain't really had that many weapons, but you weren't even allowed to have a lock on the pound, right this time, bro. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And, and then they were trying to limit you of getting food out the window. You could only get, like, $50 at a time, you know what I'm saying, to keep motherfuckers from trying to rob you and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So... Uh, there wasn't really no weapons. Like, I mean, you had a couple, you had a couple on uh, lawnmower blades and shit like that, but not really like it wasn't really common. It was just like homemade shit, like a like a like a like a like a soap in a in a in a, in a sock or some shit like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Just some, yeah, sometimes anything that you can use a different, but not really like pokers and shit like that. No, they ain't really had no fire and shit like that. And who who came out? I don't know if you want to answer now. Who came out victorious in that one? How did that go? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. I ain't trying to start that, man. <laughs> Come on, man. We ain't gonna okay. run that back, man. Come on. So check this after the riot, did everybody get moved off the compound? Did everybody go to SAG? Yeah, immediately, immediately. They actually um they snatched my YO because you had to be a youth offender to go to them camps, you feel me? Hmm. So they snatched my YO and they sent me to an adult camp. But see about these adult camps is it's an adult camp, but they got a JIT dorm in it. So everybody 21 and up, younger gonna, gonna sleep in that dorm. But otherwise than that, you want to find with everybody else. You go to work, you go to school, you know, rec, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You just sleep in that dorm. So I was in a Y8 dorm. It's called Young Young Adult Y8 dorm. You know what I'm and saying? What ACI. Oh, you was at, okay, Appalachia, okay. Yeah, East Union. I heard a lot about that place. Um, I've heard a lot about ACI. Before I get into ACI and the adult compound, what was the biggest difference you knew from between the JIT camps and the adult prisons? What's the biggest difference? Um, respect. Okay. Okay. So the JIT camps, the respect ain't really, it's different. It ain't really like that. Nah, it, it JIT can be respect is earned and adult camp respect is given until, until, you know what I'm saying, until you burn your bridges. So, you know what I'm saying, it was kind of different on that aspect right there. Got you. And what's happening to ACI? Latin Kings on the compound. Who's on the compound? Do you guys have the numbers? Are you deep? What's happening there? Um, yeah, we definitely had the numbers then. That was 2000 and, uh, 2010. We definitely had the numbers then, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and we had, we had the soldiers as far as like, um, 
knowledge wise me mentality. You know what I'm saying? We had older, it was older gentlemen there. It wasn't really like no, I was the youngest and there was probably like two more of us, but everybody else was older gentlemen. You feel me? So it was ran right. It was structural. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't no bullshit involved. It wasn't no favoritism or none of that shit involved. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty good compound. Drugs weren't really um, that big there because of the administration. That shit was kind of tough. Now, I ain't gonna lie, that shit was rough. You know what I'm saying? And I got there around the time when there was a lot of stabbings and shit going on. So everything was pretty much locked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, you said a lot of, real before I, I want to get into this right now while we're in the beginning of the video. Are you able to speak about the murder in prison you got? Yeah, I could talk about that. I played out, I played out to a second degree manslaughter on that. So yeah, I okay. talk. The viewers, because a lot of these viewers on this page, they never even been to the prison. A lot of these subscribers are a million miles away from prison which makes these videos more interesting in them. Walk the viewers that day, man. What's going on? What led up to it? What was it over? Um, so the whole incident was about a cell phone. Okay. A cell phone that I never even seen, never used, don't even know the color of it, you know what I'm saying? But um, but uh, two, two blood niggas jumped one of my brothers, you know what I'm saying, trying to rob him for his phone. You feel me? It just so happened that I was the only one that was there at the time, like as far as my brothers, because it was more of my brothers that lived in the dorm with us, because it's a T building, right? So the building, so the building is like this. So you have one wing one here. No, it's like this. So okay. you have wing one here, wing two here, wing three here. It's like a big T, you feel me? Okay. So um, so um, you know, everybody we come out and shit like that. And um, and um, so I end up running upstairs. I ended up running upstairs, you feel me? Because the guy was downstairs on the phone and shit. And uh, I see my brother, he come out, his head all, all slashed up and shit. All these niggas tried to jump me, whatever, you feel me? So uh, long story short, because there was so much commotion, the police came in, everybody got locked down. Um, people went and got moved and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So um, we locked down for 72 hours because it was a gang, it was a gang, uh, gang fight, you know what I'm saying? So anytime it's like a gang fight or some shit like that, they're going to lock it down for a couple of days so they can do their investigation and find out whatever, you know what I'm saying? So um, after like three days, I find out that one of the dudes that jumped one of my brothers, he ain't go to jail. Mm. You feel me? So you already know what time it is. Now it's time for the confrontation. I got to do something. You know what I'm saying? And he got he got to stand up for himself too, cause man, we're two separate organizations. These shit, these are the most powerful organizations in prison. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to stand up for you know what I'm saying for for what you know. So you right. know what I'm saying. Long story short, um, I ended up um meeting up with him in the hallway. We ended up squaring off in the hallway. You feel me? And he up the knife, and I just got the better of him, bro, cause I had my own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, yeah. I ended up. What you said? I both got a poker. Yeah, we both got a poker. It's war time. You already know. So you let me ask. So he knew it was coming or he just happened to be prepared? He Nah, he was prepared. It was more like preparation versus it knowing it was coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, we knew eventually we were going to see each other, but we didn't know it was going to be at that moment. Okay, got you. Got you know you. what I'm saying? Got so um, I get the better of him, bro. And, you know, I, I stabbed him like six times, bro. And one of them hit him in the heart, bro. Yeah. Did, did you know he stab him? Um, no, nah, he didn't get, he didn't, he didn't get to get, he didn't get to talk like that. that to the knife fighting, was it an art? Like, you guys learn that and being in your organization? Do they no, nah, no, nah, bro. At that point, it's survival of the fittest, bro. It's whoever okay. gonna come out on top. And, and let me ask you this. Okay, so, I, I, obviously, after that, you go to, you go to segregation? Yeah, yeah, they segregated me. I was on, I was on CM. I don't know if you ever heard of it, closed management. You know, I was on CM for five years fighting that crime, bro. 24 hour lockdown. I was behind the door for five years, bro. You feel me? So did so did things when you so did other things blow up on the compound after that happened? Was it another war after that? Once um, yeah, I heard I actually heard it. Um it popped off on like three, four more compounds about that same about that about that incident right there. But I wouldn't know because I was, you know what I'm saying? I was I was in segregation from I was on CM. Okay. And you said you fought that for five years, right? So yeah. let me ask you this. You fought that for five years, you come out of CM, you go back to population, right? Eventually. Uh -huh. Problems come from that incident when you went back to population. Man, that shit that I was at, you know, you know what's funny about this? Cause the reason why I hit you up, bro, is because I seen one of my brothers, you know, a nigga that, that I did a lot of time with Dice. You feel yeah, me? Dice. I seen that he did one for you, feel me? Dice, that's my main man. And, and when I got off of CM, I went to Blackwater and he was there. You feel me? So I was right. at Blackwater with Dice, bro, for like a year and a half, dog. And um and yeah, bro, them, them, they, they were acting like they were going to do something. But see, this is the thing. I'm from Miami. You feel me? So a lot of bloods, they from down here. They from Dave. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? So so I know them I know them niggas like from passing through or from the county or, or incident on the street or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So mind you, we in Florida, so I'm in prison. So it's, it's niggas from all over this, you know what I'm saying? From everywhere. And it just so happened that the nigga who I flipped, he wasn't from down here anyway. He was from Fort Myers, shit like that. You feel me? Okay. But at the same token, the niggas from Miami, the biggest when it comes to bloods, bro, in the chain game, bro. With the big, the big bloods, like as far as like making moves come from down here. So yeah, it was a, it, it was it was it was gonna be a situation. It was gonna be a situation because I seen everybody mounting up, you know what I'm saying? And we was ready and shit like that. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of niggas I know. So they were like, nah, ain't none of that. We're gonna ride with them. We don't know that nigga fuck them anyway, because the dude who I flipped, he was in prison for um a uh, sexual battery of a minor under 12 years old. He wasn't even supposed to be, he wasn't supposed to be repping anyway. He was in the that, that's that's a that's a, a, a serious violation, bro, when you're dealing with kids. And, and I don't give a damn what nation you part of, bro. You feel me? That right. that shit is a no no. You know what I'm saying? Right, that's right. So it was still some people that were like, "Man, fuck that." The dude was a blood, but you know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't nothing like that, bro. Ain't nothing really happened behind that. Other words than just a couple stairs and motherfuckers hating that shit ain't happened. <laughs> right. So was that? Let me back it up a little bit. From the jit camp to the adult compound, was you nervous going to the adult compound from the jit camp? Nah, I was actually happy because I was tired of that shit. <laughs> man, Monday through Monday is fight night, man. At Bavar, man, you Damn. feel me? I'm sick of that shit. I mean, I won't fight every night, but four times out the week, Damn. I'm in there. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then niggas fight over dumb shit. Like you might have got some mail, you happy? Nigga be like, oh, you got mail, you happy? Nigga, tighten up, get in the grid, like. <laughs> <laughs> He be like, he be like, he be like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> um, this one YouTuber interviewed another YouTuber, and he said, they was like, well, we'll make you fight in the jit camp. He said, man, shit, someday I just ain't get mail. And told the dude, hey, you gotta tighten me up. That's crazy. <laughs> That's how it be, bro. Um, That's okay. How it be, bro. Let me back it up a little bit to the jit camp. Before you went to the jit camps, when you was in the county and, and South Florida Reception Center, was you hearing about it? Was people telling you stories? Like, bro, when you get there, it's going to be lit. Like, what, what you hearing about it? I mean, bro, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. And, and, and I don't know how the subscribers going to feel about this when I say it, man. But shit, man, my kind of jail is rougher than any prison in the state of Florida, bro. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Miami Dade kind of jail. They go look it up on YouTube right now. They can just put it in Miami Dade, bro. That's one of the most treacherous kind of jail. I've, that's, that's one of the most treacherous places I've ever been arrested, period. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. No, nah, people don't really talk much, too much about prison. Cause bro, prison, prison is really. Let me say something, dog, because that should be overrated. You feel people be talking about prison, bro? Prison is ran by snitches and punks, bro. Okay, got you. You feel me? Like, like everybody else falling between it, that shit. And I'm gonna tell you why because we could be on the pound. It could be 150 bloods, 80 kings, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And we funny, we we handling business and shit like that. As soon as one of these snitch ass or punk ass niggas, we find out did something to us, we ain't gonna touch him because the nigga the police. Got you, you feel me? Oh, he yeah. worked with administration, so leave him alone. But as soon as somebody owes us twenty, thirty dollars over some shit that they smoke, now we want to kill him, bro. So the chain gang is really like the chain gang is really political, bro. You feel me? The shit really overrated, bro. And and niggas is losing their life whenever they losing their life over dumb shit, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like shit that don't even matter. Right, right. Got you. And let me ask you this. Okay. So you went you went from the jet camp to your adult compound, different adult compounds. If you had to take a guess, which compound would you say was the most violent one you were on? Besides Brevard, at the, as far as the adult compounds go, which ones would you say was the most violent? I'm going to say, uh, dang, it's two of them. I don't, damn, I don't, I don't, I think the most violent camp was probably Century. Okay, Century, okay, okay. And what's going because on? ACI was violent, but it wasn't like Century, like Century, that shit. Cent the only reason why Century is so violent is because you're busting nigga head, they'll lock the door for 10 minutes and they'll open it right back up again. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really no security there. It was all right, get the dude that got stabbed, get him about it, and then keep the compound running, so. Okay. You know, it was it was dangerous on that standpoint. It wasn't really no police and shit like that. You feel me? Shit, I got stabbed that century. I got stabbed six times that century. Oh, that's that's we're not gonna go past that. Let's speak on that. 
let the let, walk the viewers through it. How did that get they go and what led up to that stab and what was it over? Um, see, when I was younger, when I first got the it was like they there. Listen, when I was younger, right, when I first got to prison, I felt like the world was against me, you feel me? Because I had, to me, 10 years was a, was a, was forever when you 18 years old, you feel me? I, I can imagine. Yeah, so, so you know what I'm saying? I, I got the bright idea that I was going to go and uh, start taking niggas' legal work and make them buy it back. <laughs> right? So, 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 yeah. Yeah, that shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. So, so, so here I go. You know what I'm saying? I guess 13, 14 years later. It, oh, I'm going to tell you what's so crazy. Not to get off subject real quick, but I'm going to tell you what's so crazy, right? About about my last bid, right? The last three years I did was was hurt me way worse than the 10-year bid, first of all. You mm. know what I'm saying? And, and the only reason why I say that is because I had everything going for me because when I went in, I was a young man. I come out a grown ass man. Now I'm out here and I got shit going on. I got a family and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So me being locked up now was serious, more serious for me, you feel me? But, but um, to get back on, on, on subject, bro, it's so crazy that after 13 years, after you do something 13 years ago, it come back to haunt you, bro. Come back to bite you in the ass, bro. You feel me? Right. And, not only not only the situation that I went through that I got stabbed that I'm that I'm gonna elaborate on, but it was other situations that I occurred that, that happened to me too. While I was locked up that from shit that happened fucking 13, 14 years ago, bro. Gotcha. Like I put it like 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 I was at the stockade. So at the stockade, you gotta fight, bro. You when you first get there. So a nigga get there, he don't want to fight. I put him on the door, I run into him 13 years later. Now he trying to fight me with some shit that happened when I was 18 years old. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah. um but the stabbing shit, bro. Um, so I'm on the way. I'm on the way back from child. You feel me? It just so happened I left my knife in the room. Mm. I don't know why I did that shit. I don't know what what made me do it, but I left my knife in the room. I go eat child and shit. So I go to child. You feel me? I'm with my brothers and shit like that. And on the way back, dude, sneak up from behind me, bro, and go to hit me, bro. Mm. Yeah. From behind me, bro. Thank God he didn't hit me in the neck and there, bro. He hit me in my back five times. You feel me? And in my arm right here. You feel me? I don't know if you can see it or not. You feel yeah. me? Hit me right there in my arm right there. This one right here was the most violent, was, was the most violent one because it um it actually hit an artery. And it, you know what I'm saying? It hit the artery. So out of all the stabbings I got, the one on my arm was the most deadly one, bro. Believe it or not, bro. Mm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it was it was all over this man legal work. He ain't forget about that shit, bro. I ended up, I made him give me like 300 or some shit like that to buy back his paperwork. And that shit came back and bought me in the ass. Sheesh. So listen, okay, so after that. Did they? Did he get caught, or did you go to? How did that work? That yeah, 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 yeah. He got caught because it was in the middle of the fucking wreck yard. Oh, you know, in the middle of the compound, and then um, they they automatically when you get stabbed, they automatically put you in protective custody whether you want to or not. Got you. You know what got I'm saying? You. That's just that's just protocol. You feel me? Yeah. So yeah, I went to um, I ended up I ended up going to the box for like three weeks, and then they sent me to the compound where I went home for. I went home from Calhoun. Okay, Calhoun. And what was the dude that stabbed? Was he part of an organization? Um, no, nah, he was a neutron. He was no, nah, he, he was, was a neutron. Okay, okay, okay. And um, you say you went to Calhoun? Was that the facility you you, you EOS from there, right? Yeah, I EOS from Calhoun. And how was that facility? Was it violent? Was it chill? Was it laid back? Oh man, I don't want to talk about Calhoun. I don't want to get him fucked up. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 I was saying like this. They hanging out at Calhoun, man. You. Okay, gotcha, they hanging gotcha. out at Calhoun. Calhoun's straight as fuck. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Calhoun, Calhoun like a Calhoun like a dream, bro. When I get to Calhoun, bro. Like, I'm gonna tell you like this, bro. A cell phone in the chain game, bro, when these big ones, bro, it's probably like a thousand, anywhere from like a grand to like 1200 bucks. You feel me? Mm. So, at, at that compound, you can buy these bitches for 800, and then if you lose it, you buy it right back for 400. So, it's like, oh. it's, you, you won't never, you won't never ever. See that shit nowhere else, bro. Like gotcha. Wi-Fi boxes, Wi-Fi boxes, all types of shit. They, they, they yeah. hanging out there. <laughs> yeah. you. Listen, okay. We, I asked you a few questions about the gangs and stuff you went through with, you know, with blood as a Latin king with disease, different gang organizations. How about internal conflict? You ever had to fight one of your brothers? Oh man, see, uh, all right. I'm gonna say it like this, man. My nation is real political. 
You feel me? It's a, it's and, and and I don't give you know what I don't care if a nigga don't like what I say when I when it come when I say this right here, but it's a lot of niggas in position that they ain't got no business being there. Okay. You feel me? Like 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 it's a lot of favoritism. You feel me? Like it's I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I, I go through it with a lot of my brothers, dog, because I don't I don't I don't get with the program. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Like I like I'm my own man, you know what I'm saying? And and it's other niggas who I fuck with that's my brothers that's like me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's groups within the group. But you would never know that from the outside looking in because on the outside it's looking gold. Because no matter what problem we got or what issues we got, when it's a when it's an issue deriving with a with a, with a Latin king or any compound in the state of Florida, we all gonna we all gonna get right, man. You know what I'm saying? We all gonna get right, it don't matter what issue or what's going on. Got you, got you, got you. But yeah, bro, it'd be a, it's a lot of that, bro. It's a lot of that. I ain't gonna lie. So okay, you got you had that murder in prison with the stab, and you got stabbed six times. How many different knife incidents have you been involved with? Oh man, damn! That every incident you involved in is a knife. It's a, it's a knife involved in it. Right. You know, it's too many. I, I can't. I can't even count, bro. Damn. I can't even count, bro. It's so many, bro. It's like I wake up and sleep with it. It's better to be caught with it than without it. Type shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You ever been caught with it? Yeah, I've been caught with it. I had a couple of see, but most of, most of the time I go to confide. It was about cell phones and shit. Cause I'm okay. fucked up by electronics. Now I'm gonna have me a phone. Better about electronics. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have me a phone. Shit. <laughs> I hear a lot of people talk about about the guards in Florida Department of Corrections. Let me ask you this. I hear a lot of people say they got beat up by the guards. Let me ask you this question: Does it work like this? If you respect the guards, they'll respect you back, or that does not matter. That doesn't matter. Depend depending on what region you're in. See, Prince, I don't know what it is, though, but um, once you once you um go over that Tallahassee line and you go you go back to that central time zone, shit change up. Them people over there is different. Mm. Like it, it, it's, it's something about it. It's just it's 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 a different aura. Like the way they they don't give a damn about it. It's like they don't got no black people up there, son. You feel me? I'm I'm Cuban, I'm 100 percent Cuban. It's like they ain't never seen no shit like that up there. You you white and Mexican, bro. You feel me? So right. them guys that are really disrespectful, bro, especially when. Especially when you're an inmate from South Florida. Mm, you know okay. what I'm saying? We got a, we got a real, Miami got a real bad reputation up the road when it comes to the guards and shit. You know, we the ones with the goals in the mouth and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and we stop the problems and shit. So, like, I've had guards tell me, oh, yeah, you from Miami. You, y'all, y'all the Miami boys. I mean, we got y'all ass, you know, shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Real country fire and shit. But, yeah, bro, they ain't got no respect, bro. They ain't got mm. no respect. I know, the, I know the viewers know, and I noticed this also, that your skin, your skin is much darker than what we're used to seeing. And with that being said, was that a problem for you in your Latin Kings? Like, the people side talking stuff, being that you no, darker? No, see, my, my biggest problem in the Latin Kings is because, bro, you know, I'm from Miami. Miami's diversified, bro. We got every race down here and every color and everybody mixed with each other and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So Right. A lot of my brothers, they from, like, segregated um, communities like Kissimmee. You know what I'm saying? Like East Orlando and, and you know what I'm saying? Like shit like that. So they live nothing around, nothing but Spanish people. You feel me? Right. My next door neighbors and everybody Jamaican and Haitian and you know what I'm saying? So my biggest problem within my nation is I hang out with, I hang out with the, with the black folks, bro. You feel me? With African Americans, right. bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't look at it as racist. I, I'm not racist. It, it's not even a little bit, bro. I, I was raised with them, bro. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? But I got some of my brothers that they come from them, they come from them areas and you know they they real like they real pro Hispanic type shit. And they don't fuck with nobody but their own, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha, so gotcha. my big problem would be me fucking with other races. Okay. Okay. And um this we're gonna we gotta do two parts of this for sure. I gotta ask and um the white gang, the unforgivens. You ever been around them? Yeah. Okay, how do they move? They strategic, they militant. What, 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 what's going on with them? You ever they're, got the weak, into they're the weakest link on any compound I've ever been to, and everybody uses them for what they could get. Okay. You feel okay. Because, because since they're unforgiving, they fuck around with a lot of these um Nazi-type uh, uh, officers and shit like that. They'll be rocking the swatch sticker, and they agree with those. So nine times out of ten, they'll have a plug, bro. They'll, they'll be cool with somebody, and we'll get something in. You know what I'm saying? But as far as them being, like, militant and holding the structure and holding the compound, nah, the white boys ain't doing nothing. Okay, they ain't, they ain't moving like that. No, nah, they ain't the, moving that way. Let the viewers get, get, give them before we close. Give the viewers one more story, man, about um something. Since you've been in jail, like 
when you was in prison, did you ever go get into it with somebody where you you could? This, this, I gotta I gotta go hard with him. I know he give it he give it up just like I give it up. I need to go hard with him. Was you ever nervous about dealing? Man, with it was a it was a it was a it was a big it was a big um ZMF nigga named Fifty. Nigga, they call him 50 because he like 50 cent. That nigga big like 50 cent, bro. Nigga, nigga, mud, nigga, coffee, bust by, you feel me? So right. I had to get in the grill with him, dog. And I'm like, bro, there's no way I'm gonna win this fight, bro. This nigga, right. <laughs> nigga <laughs> drop me, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up um I ended up tacking in them bitch, like tank I was just spraying them bitch, trying to go at this shit, you know what I'm saying? And uh that nigga, that nigga got on my ass, but I had to get him up off of me, bro. I couldn't win that fight, bro. I wasn't gonna win that one, bro. You must bro. Um, yeah, yeah, he yeah, he he fucked me up in there. He fucked me up in the ground. I ain't gonna lie, he fucked me up. <laughs> he fucked me up, bro. Crazy, I man. So check this out though. You you did the 10 years first and then you did the three years. What is the difference between you coming home from that 10-year bid and then you coming home from this three-year bid mentally? What's the difference? Oh man, it was totally different because I went in 17, bro. So I ain't have none. I ain't had no kids. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had no female that I had to worry about. I was a teenager, bro. You feel me? So right. when I came out, everything was new to me. Like, everything was brand new. Like, like, like I just came out the womb. You feel me? Yeah. Versus the three years, nigga, I just got out of action. I mean, I did most of my time in the county. I only ended up doing um 11 months in prison this time because I did most of my time in the county. But, brother, mentality coming out after, after three years, bro, was like, man, I'm ready to get back to what I was already doing. You feel me? And... and you know what I'm saying? And, you know, luckily, bro, I'm out here right now, bro, because I'm not even supposed to be here, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got locked up for uh, for human trafficking and... um. Oh, for real? Yeah, I got jammed up for human trafficking and um and possession of a firearm. Mm. That shit. Serious, yeah. Well, you got to have a life, man. For real. Man, you listen, bro. Man. I be, man, listen to me, bro. When that shit happened to me in Tampa, bro, I was 16 years old. Bro. I was already in... um. And federal cut. I was already in federal custody, bro. When I was sixteen, bro, you feel me? And bro, like my whole my whole life is pretty much on the internet. Like if people knew my like my name and shit, bro. My name is Alexis Fajardo, bro. You feel me? People look me up, bro. You see my name, bro. My shit, my story online, bro. Like ever since I was a kid, bro. You feel me? My 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 dad tried to kill me and shit. He went to prison for that. You know he's doing like that. What you mean? Yeah, he tried to take my life from me, bro. You feel wow. me? He killed my he killed my he killed my big brother and then he tried to kill me. That shit online, bro. Eddie yeah. Eddie Fajardo, Miami, Florida. Yeah, that shit online. That shit on the news. Name, that is? Um Eddie, his name is Eddie Fajardo. F-A-J-A-R-D-O. That's his last name. You wow. look it up, bro. It'll have it'll have me in there, say my brother, and then it'll have my name in there too, bro. Why'd he try to kill y'all for? I don't I don't know, bro. So supposed to be my family said he's a psychopath or some shit like that. I don't know what the fuck, bro. You feel me? But he wanted the he one of the biggest um serial killers in Miami, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like on record. Yeah, on record, bro. You feel me? He killed, he killed like three babies and he tried to kill me, bro. You feel me? He in prison doing life plus 25 for that. You know what I'm saying? And then, bro, like, I really, I really could write like a book on memoir about my, about, you know what I'm saying? About my life, bro. You feel me? Two page. ASAP. Yeah, bro. Like, I got a lot to talk about. You know what I'm saying? A lot of insight. You feel me? Man. Let me ask, what, what, what's your plans now, man? You going legit? What you going to do? You going with the street life? And what's your plans now? Well, I can't, I can't never say I'm, a, I'm 100% out of the street life, you feel me? I still got my hands in there, you feel me? That's how I get a little money in this night, you feel me? I got to do what I got to do. But, um, yeah, bro, I started my own business, bro. It's a, little, it's a, uh, it's a shipping business, bro. Okay. Like, uh, like uh, 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 delivery, pickups, and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I got two trucks right now. I'm trying to expand and get a third one, bro, you feel me? We're trying to go to another area, but I got to get off this house arrest shit first before I can think about doing that, you feel me? So right. I got a couple more months on that shit. Then I'm thinking about going to like uh Fort Naples or some shit like that. You feel me? Branching out, bro. Maybe even go to Atlanta. You know okay. what I'm they got going on over there. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, bro. Niggas just taking a slow motion, bro. Cause one thing about it, bro, they quit. They they want to take my freedom away from me, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They ready for it. So I just got to do what I got to do. I'm a family man now, bro. You feel me? That's what's up, man. Hey, listen up, man. We appreciate y'all tuning in to part one of Florida Prison Talk. I'm uploading this today. You guys will see, because I did a live yesterday Let them know that this video was coming. So this is going to be part one, and we're going to do part two whenever he's available again, all right? Y'all hit that like button. Y'all hit that subscribe button, man. We out of yeah, here. Man. Hey, y'all go check me out, man, at CK Black 555 man. Y'all go check me out, man.
Give, give, give me your Instagram information again. Shit, man. At CKBlack555, man. Uh, B-L-A-Q, man. That's my new one. Okay. You got any shout outs you want to give? Um, yeah, man, I want to give a shout out, man, to my own, um, my brother Dice, man. I just got off the phone with him, man, a couple of days ago, man. I want to shout out Dice. And um, I want to give another shout out to my brother Shine, man. You ended up doing one with Shine too. Oh, yeah. King Shine? Yeah, Shine, 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 um, Shine fucked up right now, man. He's sitting in the county, man. They're trying to get him 15 years, man. No, again? Yeah, bro. They're trying to get him 15 years, bro. You feel me? So, um, he had, yeah, mm. bro. So, motherfucker, you know, shout out to Shine, bro. And Domi, I know you did it with them too, man. Yeah, you feel me? Yep. Um, oh, okay. shit. Shout out to my brother Leo. You feel me? And shit, man. Shout out to all my brothers, man. The ones who fuck with me and the ones who don't, man. I fuck with you anyway, man. Fuck it. <laughs> Got it. Peace. All right, bro.